With God, there is always more. More love, more life, more freedom. Welcome to Zoe's Exploring More with Michael Thompson. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along our journey, but He takes great care to see that we do not mistake any of them for home. Join me and the team as we explore the kingdom together, discovering the deep truths and offering encouragement for the journey. There is always more. Welcome to the Exploring More podcast with Michael Thompson. I'm here in our Exploring More Tower studio with SJ and the lovely Sherry Jennings and the wonderful Robin Thompson. And we are continuing our series on the ingredients of love. We brought in some amateurs, Stan Cavage and Benner on the first, <laughs> first and then we, uh, we traded up. We yeah. got to trade up for Sherry and Robin, some experts on this subject about love. And last week, I think we had a great time talking about all the overarching thoughts about yeah. this. This is a subject that we're not going to exhaust in a few podcasts, and it's something that we're pretty committed to at Zoe in our weekends, even in, in our, really own, everything even we our do. own fellowship, in yeah. our own team. I think at the first episode of this series, we said we could rename the podcast, like the Ingredients of Love podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> podcast. I think you guys say that every series. Yeah. Not every series, but <laughs> yeah. freedom. We said that about freedom. Yeah. 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 But, you know, I listened to those first three, two, three, and they were awesome. I mean, I love listening to you guys come around and have this conversation, journey together, explore this together. There's just something about hearing men talk about this. Yeah. So listeners, if you're not familiar, the first episode in the series is validation. So thank you for that validation and showing <laughs> me right. love that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this came from some years ago, actually through writing the book, Search and Rescue, where I was walking with God in that process, 2010 and 11. And what is it we want? What do hearts desire across the globe and across time? What is the constants you could say love, but remember the Princess Bride, I just heard that. I don't think that means what you think it means. <laughs> keep using that <laughs> word. Yeah. <laughs> and we keep using this word love, yeah. you know, and, and it is wonderfully, and I'm not sure how much it could be overused, but it's applied to many, many, many things. Sure. And so what I got to explore with God was more, what do we mean by that? Right. What that is it really? If we're made for love and we believe we are, what does that look like? What are the ingredients of that? And that's where we came up with this list, validation, acceptance, worth, which were these belonging, first, the first three podcasts, yeah, yeah. and then now belonging and significance. So today with Robin and Sherry, we want to get back into these ingredients a little bit and dig a little bit into what does belonging mean? What's belonging offer? How does that capture an element or aspect of love? Yeah. Why is it important? When I was looking into it, the definition of belonging is close or intimate relationship. Hmm. And we were made for intimacy, right? We talk about that all the time. We were made for intimacy, oneness, and connectedness with God and with each other. And I think of the quote that I use often by Gerald May. I think it's, we were made in love, out of love, for the sake of love or we were created in love, out of love, for the sake of love. But it's all about love. So in the context of this Trinitarian love, what the Trinity shares together, we were made. And we get to share in that love, relationship, intimacy, because we belong. And there's nothing that we have to do in order to belong. When we're in the mm -hmm. family of God, we belong and nothing can separate us from that. And that desire that we have to belong for belovedness is written on our hearts. We were made mm -hmm. to desire that, to need that, to want that, to belong, to be a part of something. And yeah, it's in us to want it. Yeah. There's a different element. When I asked you to marry me, I was choosing you. And there's, that's a validating thing. There's a significance there. And you said, yes, you chose me. That's a choosing. And that's an incredible part about an ingredient within love. But when you have a child, you didn't choose that child. That's just your child. I guess people 
for a variety of reasons, could you know, not choose their child. But our three daughters belong to us. They belong to me. Stephen belongs to SJ and Sherry. So it wasn't an accident that you even said being part of the family of God. And that made me think of this. Yeah, I've been chosen in one respect because he's adopted me back into this family. You know, that's a theological position. But that I belong to him, right? And he belongs to me. Those are weighty ideas. Belonging. Yeah. You're right on Mark. I think it's so true how you were describing that. What was the first definition? It was... Close or intimate cl- relationship. Yeah. And at its core, belonging is experienced in the context of belovedness and in the soil of belovedness, like we were saying at the Women's Weekend. I thought, I feel loved when I know that I truly belong. And I feel that I truly belong when I'm loved. It seems to be interchangeable yeah, almost. Good. I'm glad you shared that, Robin, because I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. I was thinking more about the longing to belong in the sense of a group of people, Mm -hmm. finding your space and your place. And thinking back to last week, invited to dinner with an incredible group of women, and it had been a long week already. And so just feeling like, gosh, going home would be so good. But I want to know these women more, and I want to be known by them more. And I've been invited, and I want to feel like I belong, and that takes time. So choosing to, even though there's the potential that it's not going to be comfortable, because sometimes becoming known and getting to know each other isn't necessarily comfortable, it's good. It's the goodness that I knew I was after. And it was so incredible because as the day was going on, realizing, you know, what, I'm going to go. I'm going to fully show up, fully be me, because how will they know me if I don't show up and fully be me? And it was an incredibly relaxing, comfortable evening, just being together, being known, being seen, being loved. And I'm so glad that I went. I'm so glad that I was there and I got to spend that time and I look forward to more. I get so angry at the enemy who so wanted me to Instead of showing up in my fullest, truest self, you know, the temptation to show up and fit in, to try to be who I think people want me to be, instead of just allowing myself to belong and be loved. Mm. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. And how to turn out. Like I said, it was comfortable and it was relaxing and I really enjoyed it. And the next day I said, hey, can we do it again? Right. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Because I do. I adore these women. And it's easy, I think, to adore and love people from afar. But that's not what we were created for. I mean, we Mm. were created to be together. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think part of that goes back to the beginning of the year when God spoke to me about just this word emerge, which means to come out from behind, to Mm. be known, Mm -hmm. to allow yourself to be seen. So moving towards that and making decisions, I could have stayed home. Mm. I could have gone home and chosen the comfort of the back deck with my husband because I know I belong there. But it was so good for my heart to step in and experiencing belonging with incredible women, too. That's good. That makes me think of this quote that I read. World-renowned researcher Brene Brown, as you know, has spent years. She is. She is a rock star. She Mm -hmm. has spent years studying and interviewing people about things that really matter, like Mm -hmm. vulnerability, courage, worthiness, and shame. So much of these characteristics are tied up in the concept of belonging. And when she asked what people are worried about and trying to achieve, it was the idea of belonging Mm -hmm. that was most important. With many people yearning to be a part of something, to Mm -hmm. be part of something, to experience real connection with others. Belonging is the innate human desire to be part of something larger than us. Mm -hmm. So what you were talking about, Sherry, because this yearning is something that we all crave and need, we often try to acquire it by fitting in and by seeking approval, which are not only hollow substitutes for belonging, but often barriers to it. Mm-hmm. When you're trying and striving, mm-hmm. I think of the false self and trying really hard. That's not what you were doing. Right. You weren't seeking after it, running after it, trying to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Brene says, true belonging is not something you negotiate externally. It's Mm -hmm. what you carry in your heart. 
It's finding the sacredness in being part of something. And once it's experienced, it has the potential to really settle us, to settle our hearts and being able to then stand courageously. And I think of how being loved settles us. Mm -hmm. And so then we're able to enter in an offer and be able to be in environments where we're able to be vulnerable. Vulner- vulnerable. That's a hard mm-hmm. word. It is. Today it and is. In, to many different, in many different ways. <laughs> that's yes. a hard word. Yeah. Yes. To say and to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad you said that too, because I realized that it's something that I've tasted and I've seen and I've experienced with groups of women. And so I want that here too. And I think that is why so often I invite and I invite and I invite. Because I know that other women long for that, too. Mm -hmm. They long for that sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. And so starting up the Monday night group again and inviting women to come. I see you. Come. Mm -hmm. Come and be with us. And speaking to women who aren't necessarily locally, who are longing for this. Saying, well, you know, walk with Jesus. Invite some women into this with you. Mm -hmm. And hearing their stories of pursuing this. Just setting the environment for a place where they can belong Mm -hmm. and their friends Mm -hmm. can belong. You're That's really good. subtly bringing up two things I want to make sure that we talk about in belonging. And that, Sherry, you just said environments that you create and you're inviting women into those. So you have a very different position. You want them to know they belong. Well, the first story you told was a story of you being invited, being invited. into somebody, mm-hmm. what was right? perceived as somebody else's <laughs> in, environment. Yeah. And I think that it has a bit of a tryout to it. You feel like you're being evaluated. You feel like you're being judged in some category. And I'm not sure that all that is wrong. I'm not wanting to get that out of the conversation because I think what we come to realize is, yes, God is looking at us. And we think, what do I have to do to measure up? What do I have to do to belong And that's actually a very helpful thing to bring to the table for him to say nothing. Then the question is, will you believe him? Right. Are you sure? Yeah. (laughs) This is not like any other tryout I've ever been in. Never, ever. You know, but so much of our world is about performance and accomplishment and skills and yeah, achievement and those things making for ourselves a space Mm -hmm. in which we can belong. We are positioned right between a couple universities, and there are departments determining whether you are accepted or not, that you belong here or you don't. Do you measure up? Yeah. Sororities, fraternities. I mean, I I remember back to sports teams. Elementary school. All right, Jimmy, you're the captain, and Tommy, you're the captain. Pick your teams. Mm -hmm. Jimmy and Tommy. (laughs) These guys. (laughs) You know what I mean? But it was like, when there's two teams, there's two kids that got picked last. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I don't want that kid on my team. Or don't want to be that people that live kid. with that their whole lives, that yeah. kind of rejection. And, and then it just grows from there, right? I mean, we're not I talking mean, about hmm. kickball So this is a anymore. huge subject because, I mean, the enemy just loves this one. I think oh, it's one yeah. where, okay, everybody pair up, get a partner. Who am I going to, who's going to pick me? Who am I going to? There's 17 people in the room. I can do math. You know, like, (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to be partners with the teacher. Yeah. You know, (laughs) it's, it's a very, very deep longing to belong, but it does feel like it's a minefield to navigate, to come to that space where you're okay. Lee opens some of her talks this way. Have you noticed Lee Barclow on the women's guide team? Well, you look like safe enough people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. If you listen last week, you I can know. hear that. It's yeah. so, yeah. weeks ago. It's, I, yeah. I've seen her do it a few times, and mm-hmm. it's never not funny to me. It's mm-hmm. just, yes. It's just breaking tension. You belong yeah. here. We belong together. And I think that's part of, let's try to get that out of the way so that we can press on and move into some of the territory of the kingdom that, you know, in that session. But I think it's the same thing, whether it's a small group that you're being invited to, or an environment that you want people to feel that, that you are in some way, mm-hmm. shape, or form responsible for. You've got a little bit of control and you want them to feel like they belong. Because yeah. we know how significant, validating, important that feeling can be. We're really talking about trust and mm-hmm. how hard it is 
to love someone you don't trust or let somebody love you that you're not sure you can trust. You know, this whole other category, podcasts number 82 through 87, trust, you know, but this yeah. belonging thing, I think of the Martian child, find the place where you belong. Oh, gosh, yeah. oh yeah. I think, I think you just example. want somebody mm. to want you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and he says on the water tower, and I think you want... You love me. You're right. You, know, you love and me you, too. And you want me and yeah. I want you. Yeah. Yeah. What I loved, Sherry, about your story too was how you shared about the wrestling and the wrangling of, okay, I'll go, but I'll just do what I have to do to kind of fit in. And then you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go and be as much as my true self as I can offer. That's what I'm going to offer. Mm-hmm. And I think myself included, you know, many times in order to arrange for belonging, we put that to the side and we just become whoever we have to become. I remember in high school being the guy that kind of got along with everybody. You know, I got along with the deadheads and the jocks and the band geeks and the pot smokers out back. I mean, I got along with all of them. And it wasn't because I'm necessarily that affable. It's more I got along with all of them because I changed who I was around them you know, as a high schooler. But what that isn't is freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is bondage. It's yeah. crushing and diminishing. Sure. It, and crushing is a great way to say it. It's crushing to try to maintain that. Because as you get more comfortable being around people, the real you starts to come out. So it really is crushing. And it's not freedom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That real you can be so tangled up in that false self that you know, yeah. that's a whole other conversation. So you overcome fear by coming through the door, but you're sitting there, not you personally, I'm not mm-hmm. talking about you, but I've been that person who is just still, I'm sitting there and it's, it's a nervous, anxious, fearful, am I okay? Your Brene Brown quote, I mean, is this safe? And I think this is some of the water God invites us to if C.S. Lewis is right with his Chronicles of Narnia and the Pevensies, the Beavers and Aslan, is he safe? It's not the right question. No, he's not safe, but he's good. You know, and how does that play in this question of belonging? Because God does want to do something with us, to us, for us. You yeah. Know, he, he doesn't want to leave us as we're found. He wants to take us into more of who we are. Mm-hmm. And some of those challenging doorways that we walk through with him are going to expose some of these things that are going to bring into question, am I okay? Yeah, so let's take a break. But on the other side of the break, let's talk about, so we have this desire in us, and it comes from God, this desire for belonging and to being seen, to being known. So what is that all about? What's God's intention in putting that desire in us in the first place? Let's talk about that when we come back in just a second. Okay. Hey listeners, this is SJ. Just wanted to tell you real quick about a cool resource we have available for you. It's a digital audio pass from both the Deepening Weekend for Women that we did back in September and the Heart of a Warrior Encounter for Men that was out in Colorado in September. We create these resources because we know not everyone can make it to the weekend but may want to hear the guiding and the teaching that took place there. And also folks want to revisit what they heard at the weekend. If you were even there, you may want to re-listen to some of the sessions that were taught. So if you visit zoe.org forward slash store, you can find the digital audio passes there, both for the Deepening Weekend for Women and the Heart of a Warrior Encounter West. And they're very reasonably priced. And Serena, our engineer for the podcast, has done a great job of editing those down. Each individual session is about the length of the average commute. So it's a great way to kind of soak in this message even while you're commuting during the day. Or to take it away for a weekend and listen to it at your leisure. Either way, I'd encourage you to go and check out this important resource, the Digital Audio Pass for the Deepening Weekend for Women and the Heart of Warrior Encounter West. We hope you'll check it out. Zoe.org forward slash store. Welcome back to the Exploring More podcast, where we are exploring these ingredients of love. We're quite a ways into the jungle of this. Yeah. And uh, we've got Sherry and Robin with us, and we're 
about Actually, ready to put it in the oven. Yeah, to, from the jungle to the oven. <laughs> from <laughs> the jungle to the metaphors. Mixed metaphors, <laughs> right. yeah. And we're talking about belonging and trying to get our arms around. And that's what I love about so many subjects in the kingdom. There's not enough time. We can't exhaust these things. No. There's insight far beyond clearly what we're capable of. And that's okay. We can explore more. But I feel like in this subject of love and the ingredients of love, validation, acceptance, worth, belonging for today and significance that we're getting our arms around a mountain. This is such a big subject. And there are people exploring this. There are, like you said earlier, Brene Brown and C.S. Lewis. I think that when you talk about Christianity, there is a reality to the invitation of faith in Christ as finding your home, finding your home. Your home is in him, and he wants to make his home in you. And there's a belonging in that. You belong to him, and he belongs to you. Henry Nouwen talks a lot about a lot. that. Henry Nouwen's a Homeness one. and yeah. belonging and yeah. in the context of belovedness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's something that, as we step back into this second part of this, that it's, again, you've asked this question last week about what's the enemy done here? I mean, the hijacking here is he's taken that deep sense and longing for belonging. And he's turned it into a trial mm-hmm. and judgments, mm-hmm. tryouts. Posing, false self. Yeah. And the weightiness and the power of that can be seen in violent groups, gang members. Mm-hmm. I mean, a core tenant of a gang, whatever gang it is, is you belong. And here's the... That's why it's so tempting. Initiation. Here's what's going to cost you. Talk about faith. Faith. You know, to try out for a gang, to try to enter into that space, to have a family. I mean, these are powerful things, but they're just being utilized in a violent and a very, very hard space. And we suffer. When this core need of being loved and belonging isn't met, we do a lot of things to try to take matters into our own hands. And this is what the enemy wants to whisper to you. You Mm -hmm. don't belong. Yeah. You're alone. You, you're, they don't want you. Yeah. yeah. You're Unwanted, alone. Unwanted, unloved. I mean, back to hijacking, that was, what's the enemy doing oh, with yeah. this? Mm. Oh, yeah. And exposing him and the whispers, you know, nobody's paying any attention to you. They're not safe. You're not good enough. I mean, there's a lot of whispers that come through this. Identity whispers. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about temptations. That comes later. But if he can get you at your core, it'll be somehow, some way in these validation, acceptance, worth, belonging, and significance. Mm-hmm. And when he can disrupt that, corrupt that, mm-hmm. and get that at work in your heart and mind, he's got a part of you, and he's going to keep going. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's such a core desire. It's such a core need. So we talked just before the break. I mean, why do you think it is such a core desire? Why did God put this in us? Because it is really so easily corruptible. The things that people will do to feel like they belong— or react to not belonging. <laughs> right. I mean, right. They, right. When they get, get rejected, yes. they, I mean, blowing yeah. up. So there's a volatility to it. There's a core desire in us that God has created. So what does that idea stir up in you? Well, like I said earlier, we were made out of love, a loving, intimate relationship, the Trinity, where they belong together. Right and function in this intimacy, missionally, together, belonging, and created us to join them in that, with them in that. So the belonging is, from what I understand, is that we belong to the Trinity, we belong to the Father, we belong Mm. there, and in relationships. I mean, if we were made for intimacy and oneness and connectedness with God and with each other— that belonging, that love, that intimacy is to be shared and enjoyed with God and with each other. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a desire to return to the garden almost. Yeah. Right? Before. Yeah, that's a good point. Because mm-hmm. we were naked and unashamed, Adam and Eve mm-hmm. both, to each other. They belonged to one another. They were made for one another intimacy with each other, but also intimacy with God, and they could be naked before him. So there's this core desire in us woven into our DNA to want to be able to return to that. 
and to not have to hide, that we can be ourselves, right? And be our true selves Mm -hmm. with others and be loved for who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as you say that, I'm thinking about some of the women, Robin, that I've met with recently about their Deepening Weekend experience. And each one of them in different ways shared about how before that, how alone they had felt, whether they were with a group of women or at church or just moving through life feeling like nobody understood them and just feeling so alone and how they experienced a sense of being seen and known, hearing the stories of other women that, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. This is so much bigger than what I've been walking through. Mm. And it stripped away some of that aloneness, that isolation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is really the antithesis. What the Yeah, right. belonging, what right. the enemy comes against us with is isolating us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wants to. We're easier to take out that way. Mm -hmm. Right. So the invitation and what was stirred for these women and for me every time I go is that I can either sink back into isolation or I can move towards God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the people around me in belonging, in love, in life, in joy, in redemptive communities in this way. Yeah. That's good. So there's a special on Netflix. Listeners, if you've got Netflix, we want to encourage you to listen to it it's, or watch it, actually. It's called The Call to Courage with Brene Brown. And Robin, you've got to think a quote from mm-hmm. it, don't you, about belonging? Yeah. She says, a deep sense of love and belonging is an irreducible need of all people. We are biologically, cognitively, physically, and spiritually wired to love, to be loved, and to belong. When those needs are not met, we don't function as we were meant to. We break. We fall apart. We numb. We ache. We hurt others. We get sick. Wow. Yeah. And belonging, we'd already talked about acceptance, but none of these really stand on their own. I mean, yes, validation. Oh, yeah. There's all all Mm -hmm. different ingredients of a cake, right? But they're all blended together when the cake is complete. When you have one, you really can be invited to the next one Mm -hmm. or another one. I know that acceptance actually does give way to this sense of belonging. When you feel outside, isolated, like you said, when you feel like you're not good enough, you will not feel like you belong. Mm -hmm. And I wish listeners, this is something that, you know, you could just kind of like, okay, I'm going to feel accepted. On that switch. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And really what you're talking about is some connection with Mm self-worth and value. And these are parts of what we're talking about. Right. Validation, worth. And so what I I would want to say is if you could do this to yourself or for yourself, then everything you were sharing earlier, Robin, about God through the question of, why do we want this? You know, mm-hmm. we were made for this. It's something that we were put in the garden with. And now there's that longing to be back home, back in the garden, back in a right relationship. And everything God can do to ridge that again. I mean, we're not separated anymore through Christ. And so to be accepted and to experience that acceptance from God, if you could do it on your own listeners, I'm sure you would have. There's a reason why the shelves have more than quadrupled. I don't know what's beyond that. Uh, Quintupled. Quintupled Mm -hmm. in the self-help department. And it is full of ways and possibilities of positive thinking, trying to arrange for your life. Pull yourself up uh, by your your bootstraps. Your best best life. Mm -hmm. And any of that, any of that apart from God, it will not be sustained. Life is too big. Life is too hard to do without a loving being that will never run out of these ingredients ever. And that is the good news. Mm -hmm. But if it's just a brochure, an article, or even a passage in scripture, and it doesn't land at home in your heart, if it isn't something that you can encounter and experience, then until it is, it's a great brochure a great ad, but there's something about stepping into that, that faith, that kind of trust, that kind of vulnerability that we've been talking about. It's the one of the most courageous things a person can do. And it's one of the most relieving things and life-giving things when we enter into that space with Jesus and say, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. 
that kind of surrender is so painful. But so good. But so, so good and yeah. helpful and important. Yeah. When we learn how, when we taste it, the belovedness being loved by Jesus, and it begins to settle our heart there, and we get more and more of that. We it, get it hungry mom- and thirsty. Momentum, right, right, yeah, right. That's good. And it begins, like I said, we get more and more settled there. So then I can't help but think of the true self and false self. So then we're able to move towards other people, hopefully, from a more settled place where we're able to offer belonging, love them freely without demanding in return or manipulating Mm -hmm. environments like, will you love me? Will you choose me? Do I belong in your group? It's easier said than done. It is. It It really is. Yet the intimate encounters with Jesus truly do settle my heart and enable me to move out in other relationships more freely able Mm -hmm. to offer. Not perfectly, because I still, I just don't think this side of heaven, we will be able to be fully free Mm -hmm. of all that entangles us and keeps us from being Mm -hmm. able to love perfectly and be loved perfectly. We just can't. But I love even your example, Sherry, of you feeling, being able to enter into that group of women free. I know you, I know your walk with God and what you're experiencing more and more belovedness, more and more true self freedom so that you're able to walk into that place and just be you and be free to be Sherry, your true self. And then that is beautiful Mm -hmm. and what's experienced as beautiful. I know for me, when I'm in the presence of a settled heart, it settles my heart Mm -hmm. and it encourages other people to be authentic. And it's a beautiful exchange that encourages more love and more belonging and more authenticity. And it's more of the intention of the kingdom, I think, the Father's Mm -hmm. heart. Yeah. yeah. I love that you brought up authenticity because there's so much irony in what we're talking about experientially, because we long for authenticity from others, right? We hear that all the time at our weekends. That's one of the great affirmations we receive as the guide team, parts of the guide team. You guys are so authentic. We love that you share transparently and vulnerably in that. And I think every group and every person wants to be authentic, but it's like, oh my gosh, if I share what's really going on in my life right now, they're going to reject me. It's terrifying. And I think most of us live under that cloud. And so then to see someone that is apparently free from that, right. you know, is sort of like, wait a minute, right. you can talk about that and still be friends with somebody? It's great. And the other thing you said to Robin was that you can move out from relationships and in your true self. And I think the flip side of this coin is for many people, it's been a part of my story. I have to choose where I'm no longer going to belong. When I've been a part of a group of people that as I get more and more free, I don't really need to be around these people anymore. And I need to break free from the lure of the false belonging that that group provides Mm. and move out of that group. Yeah, move out of that group as my true self and get free from it. Yeah. Well, and that doesn't taste as good anymore. The false, the fake belonging or whatever you called it, you know, just, it doesn't Mm -hmm. taste as satisfying. It doesn't call to your truest self or to my truest self anymore. If you've tasted the truth and the good stuff. Right. Because you want more of the truth and Mm -hmm. the good stuff. By comparison. Yeah. 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 Something about it's nourishing. It's the idea that, yeah. And that like a lot of intake, this is something that you'll burn it. So you need more of it. You know, you need more love. Mm Mm-hmm. You need more of these things. And I think to your point, where are you going for it? Where have you stopped going for it? As we just wrap up belonging, I can read you dozens and dozens and dozens of passages that are true about your belonging. And if you want them, just write to us. But until you encounter and you experience how true they are from the one who wrote them, who's brought you into his company, into his presence and wants to be near you and invites you to be near to him, I think that's when the game changes. And I want to wrap up with one more Brene quote where she says, 
yes, I am imperfect and vulnerable and sometimes afraid, but that doesn't change the truth that I am also brave and worthy of love and belonging. Mm -hmm. So there's something about your step towards this. And maybe it's not a step. Maybe it's a raise your hand. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's all you can do. Jesus, I want to belong. And I don't feel, I don't think, I don't believe that I do. I don't know how. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. Oh, so honest and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And that is such a courageous move, listeners. And if you're out there and, you know, you need to take the red pill again, or you need another dose of this, that's okay. We all do. This has a way of fading. And, you know, we were looking at some pictures, Robin and I, of when we were young, 30 years ago, with little girls in Colorado, and those were great days. That was 20 years ago, 20 years. <laughs> not 30. Oh, Easy. Yeah. 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 Gosh. <laughs> and, um, but if those were the last chapters or the last pictures, I mean, it, there's a maintenance to this, and that's the beautiful part of the kingdom of God. He wants to maintenance this. It's not just one and done. He wants to absolutely continue validating you, accepting you, showing you that he cares, that you belong, and how valuable your worth is to him, how in love he is with you, not just loves you. He's in love with you, crazy about you. And I think, as you mentioned, SJ, just if you can muster the courage to say, Jesus, I want to take you up on this offer again. Like you said about the women, Sherry, maybe it's been a long time and isolation has somehow crept in and their hearts have been missed by people. Mm -hmm. And the enemy's done a job within their heart and mind, and they're just kind of numb to it. We want to invite you to reach out. We would love to help. We'd love to enter into a conversation via email, via phone call, to try to be as encouraging as we know how Yeah. at this space. If you need a resource, Search and Rescue, which is why we wrote it, The Life and Love That's Looking for You. Search and Rescue on our website, and Heart of a Warrior. If you're a woman, we've had plenty of female readers who have been encouraged by that belovedness and the significance of being a beloved daughter as well as a beloved son. So we'd invite you to maybe look at those resources or go to our website. There's lots of free things that we can put in your inbox that maybe can help you in your exploration mm -hmm. of what it is to be loved and in this case, belong. And so we'd encourage you to do that. Yeah, email us at exploringmore at zoe.org. We'd love to hear from you. The ladies would love to hear from you. We had some comments recently on our Facebook page, you know, from some ladies. And we want to hear the voices of the ladies a little more. So we've got one more episode coming next week with the ladies in this series. And we're going to be talking about significance. So don't miss the significance mm. of our of final our, of episode. Our <laughs> mm, that's right. I've been waiting to say nice. that for weeks. Anyway, no, it just, came, that's funny. it just came on me. <laughs> so thanks again for listening. We'll see you next see week. See you next time. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Exploring More. The landing page for this podcast is zoe.org forward slash podcast. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash podcast, where you can find the show notes and various platforms to which we broadcast. You can also find us and the life of more by visiting Zoe on Uversion Bible app, Right Now Media, our Facebook page, and Zoe on Instagram and Twitter. Remember, with God there is always more, and you were made for more. Mm -hmm.